Do you have an art supply brand that you've always dreamed of using? When gouache officially became my favorite medium, I couldn't help but notice that many of the gouache artists I was following were using Holbein acrylic gouache. There were so many gorgeous color options, the paint texture seems to be a pure pleasure to use, it became my object of desire in a way. When I went on to hunt down this gouache everywhere I could, there were nowhere to be found in physical stores where I could physically go. But instead of searching more online and have a forgettable shopping experience, I decided to wait until I go back to Japan. This day has officially come! Ta-da! <laughs> I finally went back to Japan after 4 years and bought a lot of gouache from Holbein, but not just that. If you're interested to see how cool art supplies shopping is in Japan, don't forget to check out my art stores exploration in Osaka and Tokyo. At the end of the video, don't leave now, please stay for the haul. Okay, let's go. This is my gouache organizer prototype that I built by myself, as you can obviously tell. This is what I bought from Sekaido. The first art store that I visited back in Tokyo was Sekaido, one of the biggest art stores in Japan located in Shinjuku. Before going there, I kind of knew that I would find my dream gouache Holbein there. I didn't want to buy gouache right away as I was going to travel to Kyoto, but I just couldn't resist. If I don't leave this store soon, I'll end up buying all the colors. <laughs> I wanted to try out some colors first before digging deeper into the brand. The colors I chose were lilac, aqua blue, ice green, jaune brillant, ash rose, and another small jaune brillant that I picked by mistake thinking it was a different color. Then there were ash blue, ash green, and olive. At Sekaido, I discovered another Japanese brand called Turner. They had what they called acrylic gouache in the similar price range as Holbein, so I picked a few colors to try as well. I picked this Lumi Rose Usubeni Fuji Pink if I read the hiragana correctly, Ayanami Blue and Pastel Olive. Let's do the fun part, let's try the paint. If you are familiar with gouache, you probably have come across Holbein at a few occasions on the internet. The brand was founded in 1900 in Osaka and is obviously named after the Renaissance artist Hans Holbein. The main qualities that I look for when trying new gouache are the color range available from the brand, the consistency and the texture, the coverage, the drying time and the quality of the color once dry. In terms of color range available, I feel like Holbein is especially great for vivid and bright colors. There are more than a hundred different colors available from very light to very dark. In terms of texture, acrylic gouache texture is different from traditional artist gouache. The texture is more fluid but works in the same way as gouache while it's still wet. Because acrylic gouache uses an acrylic resin binder instead of gum arabic that is usually used for gouache, it becomes water resistant once dry, just like acrylic paint. It's very easy to make the paint either thick or thin, depending on what you want. The paint is densely pigmented. I only used one drop to create all the squares of each color. By the time I finished painting a few lines, the paint was already dry. I'm using cold press watercolor paper from Ash, which definitely helped the gouache dry faster. Moving on to Turner, this is also a Japanese brand named after the Impressionist artist William Turner. The company was also founded in Osaka, just like Holbein, but around 40 years later in 1945. If I remember correctly, Turner has a wider color range. They are especially great at neon, metallic pigment, and Japanese-inspired colors. I had a harder time picking colors from them though because somehow I was bothered by this graphic design on the packaging. It made me perceive the color a little differently. 
Overall, these two acrylic gouache offers a very similar experience. I think that Turner did dry a little slower than Holbein, but probably because I use more water here. These are the swatches that are almost dry. We can see that the finish is matte, a little velvety. I'm surprised by how the colors are true to their packaging as well. It looks almost exactly the same. The second store where I bought something from is called Yagoso. This store was established in 1917, then became famous for their poetry and humor postcards and their watercolor brand as well. I went to Get Koso expecting to find watercolor, but instead I found way more gouache. Not going to complain about that. They had a beautiful color range, a lot of vivid and pastel colors. And this is all I bought from the store. <laughs> Only two tubes of gouache. I know it's weird, I only bought these two tubes and purely based on their packaging as well. Because I didn't know how I would really feel about the tube, I needed to try it out first. I love the fact that you can see through the tube to get a better idea of the real color, but the tube itself is a little difficult to control. Gekoso gouache is quite creamy and has a smooth texture. I did need to use more water with the paint as usually is the case with traditional artist gouache. It's the kind of texture that needs the right brush. This small brush here doesn't exactly do justice to this gouache. You'd think a lighter color like this one wouldn't be so pigmented but it is. I've been living without a good tube of black gouache for some reason. Somehow it's a non-color that I don't really use frequently. Anyway, this black is so dense, like really dense. I only needed a small amount of this to cover this surface here. Yet, I could go even further if I really wanted to. My final verdict is that if you like traditional gouache, Gecko So is worth a try. The soft and smooth texture of the paint doesn't affect the density of the pigment at all. I really love it. The last store where I bought something from is called Bumpodo. Out of all four stores I went to in Tokyo, Bumpodo was my personal favorite because it was full of cat stationery and other cute cat things. The atmosphere there made me really comfortable and warm, but I didn't buy any gouache there as I was more obsessed with their stationery. I love collecting greeting cards, they can travel with me to keep me inspired. I can easily use them to decorate my personal space wherever I am. This one is a cute card with a squirrel that I bought for its olive green palette. It's cute but it's not overwhelmingly childish thanks to the more muted green that I really like. Then there are these tiny greeting cards that I love very much. It feels like everything you write on them will feel more intimate. Really excited to use this for myself. <laughs> I go painting outdoor when the weather allows it sometimes, but until now I didn't have a proper equipment to avoid being messy. So I bought this foldable water pot from Faber Castell. It's compact and really lightweight. Then also this Windsor and Newton palette with a nanoscopic water brush inside. Washi tape. I chose this one because it felt really Christmassy. It has birds, bears, deers, foxes, I just love it. I use washi tape a lot to stick my postcards to the wall as it's really sticky but doesn't leave any mark. It doesn't tear your precious stationery collection either. Lastly, I have this cute little box of stamps with Anderson's fairy tales illustrations on them. 
There are illustrations from The Little Mermaid and The Red Shoes, which are the only ones I know. This will probably inspire me to create my own magical stamp soon. After my trip to Tokyo, I went to stay in Kyoto for around five weeks. I also made a day trip to Osaka and that's when I bought the rest of the gouache that I have in this box. In Kyoto, I went to an art store called Yasendo. I went there quite often even though I didn't film anything in the store. It's a well-equipped art store and it's definitely worth a visit if you need good quality art supplies. And it's right in the center of Kyoto. When I went to Osaka, I went to two stores. I went to the Holbein showroom where I bought even more gouache and then I went to Kawati Art Store in the center of Osaka in the Dotanburi area. I bought a few supplies from there too. You've seen my gouache organizer prototype at the beginning of the video. I used the word prototype to make up for the fact that this looks totally wobbly. I think it's really practical. I really like this way of organizing the gouache because I can see the colors that I want to use really well. They don't take up a lot of space and the tubes stay organized by colors. I think it's really practical. Here are all the gouache that I bought from Japan. It was very hard not to buy all the colors as they all looked so pretty in the stores. I stock up on some white. I have this titanium white. Chinese white and also is primary basic primary white. I use an insane amount of white every time I paint so it's good to have a reserve of it. Then I added to my white collection a metallic white. This one is really cute, it's really pearly this neutral gray. It's really easy to mix your own gray of course but because the black that I have from Gecko So is really really pigmented. I always end up having to add more white to the final paint. It just makes my life easier to have this neutral gray that is very light. I use a lot of blue, green, um, purple and pink hues. So I chose the ones that I like the most. Mixing the light shades with um, medium and darker shades. I added this one to my neon collection. It hurts my eyes even in real life. It's so, so bright. What I really love from Holbein and Turner is that even the lighter colors are really opaque. You can cover up your pencils drawing very efficiently so I don't have to pre-erase before painting. I didn't buy so much yellow from Japan as I already have a few tubes from Linel. I think I prefer the yellow from Linel more actually. None of the ones that I saw from Holbein or Turner really caught my attention except of course for this, um, where is it? Light yellow, this one from Gekoso. There are these cute peachy orange colors that I bought from Holbein also. From the artist line, I bought this gorgeous vermilion. This one also hurt my eyes so much in real life. A cadmium green that is so so bright. Bellflower. I love this one so much. This one is moss green. It makes me feel like I'm in a moss garden in Japan when I use it. Ultramarine light. I used this one and the vermilion during my people watching session in Osaka. Blue black. It's such a subtle way to use black without using black. This sepia. I have been dying to find a proper dark brown and this one is it. Musotis blue.
from Kawachi Art Store, I bought this watercolor block from Muse Paper, which I just used to demonstrate the gouache from Holbein. They named this line Watson. If you've watched my art store's tour in Osaka, you'll know that I bought this one solely because of this pearly packaging. Finally, we come to the brushes. I found this flat lotus brush in Kawachi. I've not been using it much yet. Actually, I have never tried it, so I'm going to give it a try now. These brushes here I bought from Holbein Showroom. They have become the ones that I use the most. I especially love the fact that these hairs are longer but still firm enough to control the strokes. This one is from Chelsea. It's what I use to sharpen the details of my paintings. These are the recent paintings that I painted with gouache from Holbein, Turner and Gekoso. I love the quality of the colors, the deep textures, they really fit the mood and tone that I'm looking for. I used the paper from Muse. You can see that it didn't warp at all, yet I used so much water when I was painting. I'm really happy with the quality. So I've waited three years to buy my dream gouache Holbein in Japan. Was it worth the wait? Honestly, it was. It really was. I'm so glad that I waited until I go back to Japan to buy my dream supplies because this really made my whole trip and my whole art store's exploration really special and memorable. And I can't really replace that with um, shopping online, which is practical for sure, but it, it's just not the same at all. Not only I got to buy my dream supplies, I also made really precious memories for myself, with myself, that I will keep forever and that just doesn't have a price. Thank you so much for staying with me up until here. Don't forget to check out my art store's videos from Osaka and Tokyo if you're curious. I promise they are quite fun. And of course, if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you very soon in my next video where I'll be in Paris. Bye bye!